This is BBC World News. I'm Helen Daufers. The headlines. Aftermath of the scandal, the entire board of US gymnastics is to resign after the sexual abuse of a young athlete of young athletes by Larry Nassar. Paris prepares for floods as the Seine surges higher. Czechs pick their new president in a tight race between liberal pro-European Gigi Drahos and populist anti-immigration Miloš Zeman. Hello and welcome to BBC World News. The entire board of the US Gymnastics Authority is to resign over its handling of the sex abuse scandal involving former team doctor Larry Nassar. The US Olympic Committee had threatened to strip the board of its status as a sports governing body if all its directors did not stand down. Larry Nassar was jailed for up to 175 years for sexually abusing young athletes. The BBC Peter Bowes reports. As Larry Nassar begins what amounts to a life sentence, the fallout from the abuse scandal has been swift and decisive. The entire board of USA Gymnastics has gone and there have been other resignations too. Mark Hollis was the athletic director at Michigan State University when Nassar worked there. He and another official have decided to quit. It's been an absolute honor to guide the athletic department for the last decade. That being said, today I'm announcing my retirement. I'm not running away from anything. Hundreds of homes have been evacuated in Paris as the city braces itself for more flooding. The river Seine, which burst its banks on Tuesday, has swollen again due to ongoing torrential downpours. Kevin Connolly is in the French capital, standing on the banks of the Seine. Good morning. Well, it's still pretty dark in the City of Light, but I hope it's light enough for you to see behind me the River Seine, maybe six metres above where you'd normally expect it to be at this time of the year. Not at the stage yet where it's going to burst its banks here in the City of Paris, although outside the city in the countryside, in the Seine Valley, it has come over its banks. It has flooded some small towns and villages there. Paris, I think, expects to see the waters reach some kind of peak today. We're on the Pont de la Concorde for anybody who knows the city, right in the heart of Paris. A few bridges down the river that way, there's a statue of a Crimean War era soldier, a huge statue, and that's how Parisians measure the water level. He's called a Zouave, a particular type of soldier who fought in that war. Uh, at the moment, the water is up to his thighs. In times of real crisis here, in 1910, for example, when there was very serious flooding, it reached up to his beard. So we're a little way from that point of crisis, but the peak of the waters here in the city is expected to come sometime this afternoon, and then we'll know if this year is going to join that year, 1910, in the history books. How is it affecting daily life, though, for Parisians? Well, traffic is still running around me here. The city's coming to life. It's a Saturday morning. Uh, but there have been precautions taken. Some of the roads around the riverside are closed where the authorities expect that the water is likeliest to come over the edge. A few people, several hundred people, have been evacuated from riverside homes. And the Louvre Museum has closed a lower ground floor gallery. We think that's essentially a precaution. I should say what everyone's talking about here, actually, is not so much the nuts and bolts of uh, city road management. It is that the weight of the water from the Swollen River has been flushing rats out of their usual underground haunts. So Let's take a look at the, some of the stories making the news. Several of the richest and most influential men in Saudi Arabia have been released from detention in a luxury hotel in the kingdom after paying large sums of money to the authorities. They were among about 300 held in a major anti-corruption purge in November. Those new freed include Walid Al Ibrahim, the founder of MBC, the first privately owned Arab satellite TV network. 
The US Defense Secretary Jim Mattis has stressed the need for diplomacy rather than, rather than military action in dealing with North Korea, but he did describe Pyongyang's behavior as being reckless and provocative. Mr. Mattis made his comments after holding talks with his South Korean counterpart in Hawaii. Residents of Cape Town have been warned that their water will be shut off by April unless they do more to conserve supplies. A severe drought has been consumption limited to 50 litres per person per day. Now, South African officials are urging people to limit toilet flushing to save water. Polling booths have opened in Czech, the Czech Republic for the second day of the second round of the country's presidential election. The incumbent Miloš Zeman and his challenger Jiri Dravos, Drahos are currently neck and neck according to the latest polls. While President Zeman seeks a second five-year term, Mr. Drahos says it's time for a change as he no longer has anything left to offer his country. We can speak to our correspondent, Rock Cameron, who joins us from Prague by the river Vitava. Don't forget, you can get in touch with me and some of the team on Twitter. I am at BBC Tim Wilcox. That's all from BBC World News. Goodbye.